Welcome back everyone, uh, this is Shadow Drake, and uh, I suppose this is going to be kind of like a part 2 to the phase change mechanics. Um, with the sh phase change mechanics, I covered a lot about how to read phase change diagrams, some experiments regarding how to manipulate condensation evaporation to some extent, but really ultimately, uh, what this video will take part, uh, will feature more, is kind of how to use uh, distillation for separating liquids because what will happen eventually I have this liquid tank here and as you see it is a uh, screwed up for lack of a better word you know you may have a time where you start with liquid water maybe you ran just the condensation valves and suddenly all of a sudden you have some NOS or pollutants condensing and you have a really, really bad mix. Or maybe not as bad. Now I purposely filled it to be this bad, but now comes the question, how do we get these separated? Considering that the the most obvious thing to use would be an atmospheric filtration. However, that only works with gas pipes. This is all liquids. This is all problematic. So, yeah, let's start with that. <clears throat> so, first thing that we could probably right off the bat think is using a perch valve. The good thing about a perch valve is that it will separate or it will draw the gases from a liquid pipe network. And so while that is probably the best way to think about it, and that is actually a good idea, the problem comes in that liquids must have a pressure and gas to keep them as liquids. So right now, I could purge valve and remove all of these pollutants. But there will come a point where this pressure gets so low that now we'll have NOS evaporating and then water evaporating, and suddenly it's no longer a pure pollutant gas that's coming out. Now it's going to end up being a mixture. That, in, that will lead to some problems. So just the purge valve isn't a simple and dirty solution. And if you want to keep the water and NOS in here, well, you can't just expel everything to atmosphere and start clean. So that's not an option either. So with that, let's, let's go back to the phase change characteristics. And we're going to have to take advantage of that. Uh, this gas is roughly 35 Celsius, so let's just say 35. And we're dealing with water, NOS, and pollutants. So, let's start with water. At 35 Celsius, we need a pressure of roughly, come on now, roughly 17 kilopascals in the tank to keep it as water. So, let's remember that. 17 kilopascals for water. Let's look at NOS. We need 1,121 1, kilopascals. So significantly more than water. That's a huge jump. So we need 1,121 kilopascals to keep all the NOS as liquids. Now we look at pollutant, and that one is going to be kind of a easy one to look at because we have some gaseous, gas, gaseous pollutants and some liquid pollutant. As you can see, we need about 3.8 megs, or 3,804 3, kilopascals of pressure to keep to have liquid pollutants. <clears throat> so we got this information. What does that all mean for us? Well, as you can kind of see, that's a little bit more than what the phase change diagram is, but we don't have any gaseous water or gaseous nitrous oxide. We still have 27-ish liters of pollutants in here, so now comes how are we going to get rid of that? Well, Easiest thing is, of course, a purge valve. So now I'm going to build these kind of awkward looking. 
like on my builds, they will always be... That is way too awkward. But I'll work with that. And let's just keep it all on gas pipes. And let's go on ahead and power it up. Let's just get this out far in case I want to build it extra pipes. So, with the purge valve, we are pretty sure that we're going to get only pollutants out up until we get to, what, 11, 1,100 kilopascals? So why don't we just set this purge valve to something that we can work with with NOS? So, from pollutants, the next one that will evaporate would be NOS. Water is going to stay... <coughs> excuse me. Water is going to stay as water for quite some time. But liquid NOS at 35 is going to... We're going to need at least 1,120 kilopascals. Now, I will say that because we're draining pollutants, we're going to reach a problem. Evaporation cools the whole thing down. So the whole temperature of that tank is going to very st steadily decrease. So we do have to keep an eye on freezing temps. And for that, NOS will be okay at negative 21, but water is going to have an issue at zero. The one good thing about water is that it has such a high specific heat that it will be very resistant to the temperature change. I wouldn't really recommend purging purging gases out to force evaporation unless you have a very small amount of that liquid that needs to evaporate or you have some form of temperature control system to help keep gases from freezing points. That being the case, on the other end of the spectrum, if for some reason you're forcing pollutant the a gas to condense, you also want to be aware that you want you do not want to get it too hot, and so for this experiment, uh, for this purpose, we're evaporating pollutants, so we're not going to have too much of an issue with getting warm. So let's just pick, let's just pick, uh, <coughs> excuse me, let's just pick uh, 1,500 kilopascals. <clears throat> that should be more than enough for all this NOS to stay a liquid. But it should also help, since this is going to cool, it's also going to ensure that we're working at a good range. Give yourself some wiggle room. So now while I have this, I do have to consider another problem. Where am I going to put this? If you want to store your pollutants, well, you're going to have to move it elsewhere. It's, it's, it's going to move. And... As you can tell, this is my pollutant pipe, and it's a little bit contaminated, but I don't really care about that small contamination. So if I want to move that, I will need to worry about condensation, because I'm going to pressurize the pollutants. And the other thing I will need is to go on ahead and put a pressurant valve to kind of help along, help this along. Now you might know you'll notice that I'm giving quite a bit of space. And the reason for that is purge valves work kind of like pressure regulators. If this pipe network is not very well pressurized, it's going to struggle to remove it's going to struggle to remove that. Thing that I am going to add is I'm gonna add some volume. Let's just oh, that's not enough. There we go. So let's get <coughs> excuse me. Let's get a very well pressurized or of highly voluminous pipe system up there. 
this is a Mars, so of course, you have, uh, there's not a lot of temperature swing. The solution might need some modification if you cannot afford to have, yeah, you know, if you cannot afford excessive heating or cooling, uh, heating in Vulcan and Venus and cooling in uh, Europa or other, or the vacuum worlds. So let's start this coin. So already we're moving some pollutants in here. This is going to, this pressure valve is going to push them back in here. It's going to force some condensation. That's fine. If for some reason the pressure in this pipe gets too high, it is going to condense. Th those liquids are going to condense. But once again, this is not going to work very well if this is already fairly well pressurized. So while we're moving these pollutants in here, we're also having to deal with this. Oh, look at that. So I started out this video, I think I have roughly 30 liters of pollutants that needed to evaporate. And as you can see, that 30 liters in the tank is almost gone. And that's what we want. We want the excess gas to leave. Now, if I had mixed this with another gas, like say I added nitrogen into this group, that kind of complicates the things. In that case, if you really want to save all the gases, the nitrogen, the pollutants, the nitrous, and the water, Hunger, ironically enough, I would recommend making this worse. You pressurize this with pollute, uh, nitrogen to force every single pollutant to condense. The idea is you only want pure liquids to move. And that's where we're going to go to the rest of the setup that you will see. If you watch my phase change mechanics video or have a lot of knowledge, a good amount of background knowledge of this, you can probably guess that I am going to use expansion valves. That is going to be a tricky situation. Expansion valves will only move liquids to a gas network, and that's where the trickiness will come in. I am going to purposely stress a, a gas pipe network to sift through all my liquids. Yeah. Of course, I am doing this with the expectation that I want to keep all my gases. Why I want to keep these pollutants? No idea. I'm keeping them. So, while we're working with that, I have this little pipe of nitrogen here. This is going to be my pressure and gas. We're just going to let this keep going. Grab as much pollutants as it can. Remember, it's going to go down to 1500 kilopascals. Realistically, I can continue on with the next part because all I need to make sure is I have liquid water, liquid NOS, and the only thing in the air is pollutants in there. That works for me. So let's go ahead and start this off. Now, one of the things with an expansion valve... Let's see, if I put the digital valve there... The, the, let's put you right here. And in the converse, uh, the other side is going to be... Condensation chain, condensation valves. I am going to use insulated piping to kind of work with this as best as possible. But now I will also need. Where's my regulator? Re regulator right here. Pressure valve, nope. Uh, pressure regulator, that's what I need. I am going to go on ahead and do this. Let's go on ahead and wire you up. Now, 
we'll go back to the phase change characteristics. Uh, I'm going to finish that up soon. But in this stage right here, where I am pushing liquid water and liquid NOS, I do not want any of these liquids to evaporate. I just don't. That will cause too much cooling, potentially freezing and exploding things. And that's what we don't want. So, let's go back to the phase change diagrams. NOS. Now, NOS is special. Instead of a max condensation pressure of 6 megapascals, I only need 2 kilopascals. So this kind of helps this build out a little bit. I'll only need 2 megapascals worth of pressure in those pipes to keep it going. Water at roughly room temperature barely needs any pressure. So I really don't have to worry about water. So let's go on ahead and pressurize this gas pipe network to 2 megapascals. And that's done. Perfect. Now. Let's go ahead and get that. We'll get my other intermediary. We'll just put a liquid tank there. Just for simplicity's sake. This one's going to be a little bit of a head scratcher. Because once again, I really don't want gases to evaporate in here. The only problem here is... <clears throat> I really need to know exactly what gas is going to go in here. In this case, it's going to be nitrous oxide and some NOS. You really want to be careful with exactly what happens in here. I don't want to pressurize this tank with anything but nitrous oxide. And I don't have very many... Well, actually, I do have a tank of NOS here. So let's go on ahead and uh, pipe something up that way. Again, if you can avoid liquids evaporating, that would work best. I think I could... I might, just might, not 100%, might be able to get away with a lot of nitrous oxide evaporating. But because I'm putting this on a insulated tank, which has a huge amount of volume, that might actually aggravate things. It could make it worse. So, let's go back to the same thing. We just basically need enough nitrous oxide in here to keep it all pressurized. So, in this case, let's just set you to 1500 for now. I'll just kind of keep an eye on this. I'll probably leave that going for now. Okay, so here on this part. I got two options. I can just straight up connect liquid pipes here, or if I am going to attempt to automate this, I can put a liquid digital valve here. Because keep in mind that these valves cannot be automated at all. They have no power, no network connection, and that can be potentially problematic. However, what you can automate is whether this segment of pipe will connect or not. Where are we at here? Still quite a lot. Okay. So, if I turn on this liquid valve, that will allow this pipe to fill up. See, not a lot of liquids. And if I turn it off, yeah, it won't mesh with this at all. But this can also be a useful thing for testing out to see just how good this holds the liquids. I only have 1.64 liters of liquids. I can turn on this expansion valve. That's already more too much. Let me add some volume here. Uh, I said add volume. 
There. Okay. Now you can see this stays completely fine as water. And if this was ready, I could just open a condensation valve. I'm just going to force some of that to evaporate. And we'll be able to see this. This cooling is what I'm concerned with because of all of this NOS evaporating. I think if I had just let it go straight on, I would have had problems. So as far as the system is concerned, I added some volume to help with it. I could have added some inline gas tanks to add significantly more volume. But again, that would make this whole thing susceptible to uh, temperature changes because these are not insulated. So this is going to take quite some time to pressurize. It's potentially problematic. And that is because this isn't very well. It doesn't have a lot. Hmm. Might have to take a quick break as I let this pressurize because that's... Not gonna work out too well. Okay. That is not gonna pressurize very fast because of the fact that I don't have much in here. But, let's see. If I were to do this, one condensation valve is not enough. It actually is enough to handle that because it is being throttled by this. Because remember, we're equalizing liquids here to the sing solitary liquid pipe. I could add inline tanks up here to increase how much gets moved. And as you can see right here, I have some NOS that's evaporating. And thankfully, I must be having a steady stream that the temperature is okay. So I guess I probably didn't even really need to pressurize this. Would have helped, but probably didn't need it. I can turn on this condensation valve to make sure more of it is in line. But the key thing is, we want to keep the stress under 100%. And we're going to slowly very slowly drain these liquids because of the nature that this is a single pipe network. If I were to increase the volume here, that means now more liquids can be in this pipe network, which in turn means more liquids will feed our gas network, which means overall more will be going into this tank. For test purposes, I want to see how much one of these really does. Oh yeah, that's a problem. As you can see here, I have nowhere near enough capacity for that. But surprisingly enough... I do have a capability of lowering it down with more capacity. Remember, more volume in this gas pipe system. I just realized something. I increased the volume. I've been increasing the volume. But I have not been increasing the pressure. If I kept increasing that, I would have hit problems. There you go. All right, I could increase the volume to help keep the stress from going up. And as you can see, a uh, 100 liter segment is enough to handle th this 140 liters. Meanwhile, this digital valve right here, I can shut it off and that can allow this to drain. And that can be done for automation purposes. You can automate this liquid valve, presuming you got this at the perfect state. Let's turn this on. 
my liquids will move straight on to this insulated liquid tank. And then what you will want to do is basically do the same thing as I did over here. Build this same setup to make sure that all of my liquid NOS evaporates, leaving pure liquid water. Then we are going to duplicate this setup again. Oh, looks like a pipe did get damaged. Oh well. We will duplicate this setup again to get the water out. I don't have enough stuff, so give me a sec. And plus, this is going to take some time. As you can see, my liquids are almost gone. Uh, give me... Let's see here. What am I going to need? I think I have one lit digital valve. So we'll do this again. Right here. Uh, let's see. Let's do yet another expansion valve. Condensation valves. Let's just repeat this. I will have to make more stuff. And you will just be my little pipe valve for volume control. Let's go ahead and bring my nitrogen over here. Being absolutely careful not to mix it with my other stuff. I have more insulated pipes. volume is in here. 60? Okay. 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. I don't, oop. Well, don't need you anymore. Let's go ahead and pressure regulator here. As you can see, I'm basically just literally duplicating that setup. Because this is going to be... Oh, is all the liquid gone? Almost. Since this is going to be NOS being separated from water, the only thing I expect here would be water. So let's look at that. Water at roughly 30 Celsius. Really does not need a lot. 15 kilopascals. So let's just pick a nice number. Let's just go with... Let's just go with 200. Yeah, okay. No, oh, no, back here. 200. There we go. This should once again keep the water as water. Still got a little bit more. This is a, this can be a lengthy process. Now, for automation purposes, you would obviously want to shut this off or control what its setting would be about right around the time that you need this to stop purging. Purging gases out. Let's give me some time to build stuff and let these things settle out and I will return. Welcome back everybody. Alright, I've given it some time. Well, I went ahead and rebuilt up the next stage and I gone ahead and pre pre got it ready so that you wouldn't have to wait too long. So let's see. As far as the original tank, it looks like it almost has all the water and nitrous completely filtered out. The pressure is still dropping thanks to this purge valve. 
and it's all being fed back to this pollutant tank. And as you can see, condensation is happening, so there I am actually getting some liquid pollutants. Again, I said I don't really care about that. This is still feeding through, and it's actually to the point, since there's such little liquids, I only have one condensation valve operational. As far as the nitrous and the water, we are currently in the process of removing enough pressure so that all of our liquid nitrous evaporates. Fortunately, there's still quite a ways to go. And I did add this pipe heater to help add some thermal energy back because what it is right now, although I am removing some, the cooling effect of this, of the evaporating nitrous is causing this to slow down and how quickly it is evaporating. And even with this single pipe heater, you can see there's still tank is still cooling down fairly significantly and I did prepare this and well, it's already got pre-pressured with 200 kilopascals of nitrogen uh, this perch valve is actually trying to get it to 800 kilopascals and I went ahead and ran this water line and pushed it up to here so that it's already pre-pressurized with a back volume regulator to help get that set up so all in all, based on this, this is a very, very slow progress. And as you can tell, I still got 136 liters of nitrous to evaporate. And as you can also see, the temperature has dropped pretty significantly. Well, pretty significantly being almost 10 degree drop. Recall that I only evaporated a tiny amount of pollutants to get this up to like stayed roughly 35 celsius so it barely dropped but from 35 to here you can see that i've actually got almost a 10 degree difference and that's why i added this pipe here because that that extra difference is going to slow down this but again since a purge valve only really works based on the pressure differential this is actually kind of slowing me down right here so what I wonder is if I put a volume pump, if I had one, I don't think I have a volume pump anywhere over here, it's a mixer, ah uh, well, I wonder if a back pressure regulator will be enough. If I put back pressure regulator set to zero. So if I do that, will that be enough to speed up the process? Eh, it looks like it kind of helped. Not by much, but it kind of helped. Uh, let's play some gymnastics to increase the volume, which actually thinking about it, I probably could have just done that. So that is what it is, it's just so slow. Gosh. Uh. There's a lot of liquids to get out. So, you know what? I'll be right back. And we're back. Alright, so that took most of that entire evening. I can't tell if the sun is rising or setting. It was like watching paint dry, but in this, in this case it was like watching nitrous evaporate. And as you can see, we're almost done. We're almost done with the full evaporation, and I did set this to zero to kind of help speed it up, so I might as well set it back. I'm going to hit and shut that off too.
And so now there's barely any latent heat from this, so. All right, done. All right. Filter low. Yeah, yeah, I don't believe so. So, we got purely water. Li purely liquid water. Filter low. And nitrous oxide pressure and gas. So now we can actually begin the filtering part. So that's going to fill out. Now let's just see how well this goes. Uh, one valve. Let's try to get the water out. Oh yeah, too much. Still too much. Oh, there's a fourth right there. Yep. Obviously I needed more volume. Oh yeah, there's the damage. That gets so high. Oh, right. Forgot to back pressure regulator this. Oh, okay. Let's do that again. So, as you can see here, water is coming in. Pure water. It's going to get drained out. And now it's all happy. And as you can see, we're getting rid of all the water leaving just the NOS in here. Just like what we saw back there. And now we have liquid water. And it's going strictly to this tank. So, where do we start? So we start originally with this tank at some pollutants, water, nitrous oxide. We emptied some of the pollutants out, the gaseous pollutants out, so that all the liquid pollutants could evaporate. Then we use an expansion valve and gas pipe network with several condensation valves to push the liquid nitrous and the liquid water here. And then we repeated the same steps. We removed some of the nitrous oxide that was pressurizing this tank so that there were there would be no more liquid nitrous oxide which left just liquid water which in turn we did the same setup pushed it to a gas network and now pushing it to our dedicated water line that is being emptied out that is how we could use distillation to achieve this purpose uh, as far as I don't have a power Okay, you're weird. Uh, let's see. Digital valve. Does it say how much it costs power wise? Five watts? That's interesting. So, as far as power is concerned, perch valves, I believe, are 100. Pressure, uh, pressure valves are also 100. Uh, this volume pump is just to help speed up the drain. That can be a lot. Same with the back volume regulator. But we have a setup that allows us to take a heavily polluted water tank and separate just the liquids we want. Now that goes without saying, if this was originally your liquid water line that was connected everywhere, getting rid of all of a bad gas is a massive undertaking. I think I've already spent three to four in-game days just basically watching paint dry. So ideally, if you pollute your water network, it's going to be a big pain to get it all out. So hopefully you don't let it get as messed up as I did. Like I, I put what close to 500 liters of all the liquids in here except for pollutants. That was quite a lot to get through. As you can see, now we just... Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we, we're finishing up and getting the water out finally. 
Oh. So, this has been Shadow Drake. Hopefully, this video can help you. And, uh, yeah, see you next time.